One of the most significant events in medieval England was the Peasants' Revolt, which took place in 1381. The lower classes in the country were very unhappy with what was happening to them, as they were becoming poorer and a number of other taxes in the wake of the Black Death were being imposed. There were many economic and political tensions, but the rebels marched into London and caused a huge amount of chaos. Many people were killed by the Peasants' Revolt, including one man who was the most senior figure in the Church of England. Simon Sudbury was the Archbishop of Canterbury, and he was a very senior figure, also in the King's government. However, he was executed on Tower Hill, outside of the Tower of London, by the baying crowd who wanted his blood. He was a prominent member of the 14th century government, but was brutally slain by the rebels. Join us today as we look at the horrific execution of Archbishop of Canterbury, Simon Sudbury. And remember to support our channel. Please make sure to subscribe. Born around 1316, Simon Sudbury rose to a number of positions in the church and government in the 1300s. He was a son of Nigel Theobald of Sudbury in Suffolk, and as a young man he was sent to the University of Paris in France to study. He rose to become one of the personal chaplains and priests of Pope Innocent VI, the most senior figure in the whole of the Catholic Church. However, he was then, in 1356, sent on a mission to Edward III, the English king. However, he remained part of the English government following this, and in 1361, he was made the Chancellor of Salisbury. Then in October of that year, the Pope then asked him to become the Bishop of London, and he was consecrated the following year. This was a very senior position in English worship, but he was then working as a papal ambassador for the English king, Edward III, and also as one of his advisers. He was close with the king, and for this, on the 4th of May 1375, he then became the Archbishop of Canterbury. This was the most senior position in the English church at the time, but in June 1377, Edward III died, and it was Simon Sudbury who crowned the new king, Richard II, at Westminster Abbey. In his position as Archbishop of Canterbury, Sudbury faced reformers and dealt with them strongly. For example, in 1376, John Wycliffe, the reformer, faced him and he then took action against him. He was deemed a strong heretic and was viewed as a dangerous individual. Following his death, his bones were even dug up and then burned on a fire, and he was seen as very dangerous. But in January 1380, Sudbury then became the Lord Chancellor, who was responsible for the country's finance, and with this the peasants who later rose up thought he was one of the main people responsible for inflicting the financial suffering onto them. When the Peasants' Revolt broke out, it's unlikely that many people believed how influentially important it would be. They advanced from Kent to the capital, and the force was armed with sticks, battle axes, swords and bows. The revolt reached Blackheath on the 12th of June 1381, and news reached the King. Richard II travelled by boat on the Thames into London, and he stayed inside the Tower of London for his own safety. He was joined by his mother and Archbishop Sudbury, along with Lord High Treasurer Sir Robert Hales, and the Earls of Arundel, Warwick and Salisbury. The King tried to get the rebels to return home, but this was all in vain, and there were many conversations with the advisers in the King in the Tower of London on how to deal with the revolt. Many of the military commanders were in France and in Europe, and England was weak at the time. The rebels crossed London Bridge, and the defences on the bridge were opened from the inside, they then entered rather easily. They made their way towards Oldgate and swept through the city, and then assembled a list of people they wanted to execute. They wanted Richard II to hand over Simon Sudbury for execution, and he was a widely hated figure by the crowds. On the morning of the 14th of June, the crowd continued along the River Thames and burned down houses of officials around Westminster. They freed the prisoners inside the jail there, and also inside Newgate Prison, they then hunted foreigners and killed them on the streets. The King's government was isolated in the Tower of London, and the King had left that morning to try and negotiate. However, the King left Simon Sudbury behind in the Tower, as he may have wanted to distance himself from the figures of hatred. Whilst Richard was at Mile End talking to rebels, the Tower of London was taken by the peasants. This force approached the castles and the gates were open to allow the King back into the Tower, but 400 rebels entered the fortress with no resistance. Guards gave over to them quickly, and once inside they stormed the different rooms and were hunting down their key targets. They found Archbishop Simon Sudbury in the Chapel of the White Tower. 
He was saying mass at the time and was in deep prayer, but without a second to think he was then dragged out of the oldest part of the Tower of London and was dragged out to Tower Hill. He was carried out by the peasants, whilst people threw things and booed him, and when he arrived on Tower Hill, it's likely he begged for his life. On Tower Hill it was recorded that the crowd surrounded Sudbury and Robert Hales, the Lord High Treasurer, who had been captured. It was then said that Sudbury was then beheaded by eight frenzied sword blows to the neck, and that the person, playing the role of the executioner, struggled to take his head clean off. After his head had come off, the executioner then took off one of his fingers from his hand to the crowd that were cheering wildly. After this, his head was then placed on a pole above London Bridge, and his clerical hood was nailed to it, with no questions as to whose head this was. His body was then left out for a few days, before it was then taken to Canterbury Cathedral. His head was taken down six days later by the Lord Mayor of London, and was taken to Sudbury Church, where it's still held today, and can be seen. His body was interred in Canterbury Cathedral, and a cannonball was placed where his head should have been. Simon Sudbury was a brutal victim of the Peasants' Revolt, but he was a figure of hatred and oppression inside England at the time. The crowd would have been baying for his blood, and it was certain when he was seized inside of the Tower of London that he would have been brutally slain by the crowd. Ultimately, the Peasants' Revolt failed, with the crowd being promised what they wanted, but they never benefited from the changes that were promised, and these never came. But still today, the Peasants' Revolt is considered one of the most important yet shocking events of medieval England. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.